This video is brought to you by Spiderfy, the ultimate bird and bug system add-on for Blender, available for download on blendermarket.com. What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create a creepy ghost cloth effect in Blender 3D using motion capture data and cloth simulation. First, clear your Blender scene. Before we start working in Blender too much, we need some motion capture data. I'll go to Mixamo.com and find a motion capture animation I want to work with from their library. Once you find one you like, select the In Place option and download the motion capture data as an FBX file. Now import the motion capture data in Blender using the Import FBX option. To loop your motion capture animation so that it doesn't stop moving in the middle of your timeline, select the armature, go to the graph editor, and change the extrapolation mode to cyclic. Now your animation will continually loop over your timeline once it runs out of data to work with. To animate your armature's location over time, add an empty to your scene and parent the armature to that empty. Now we can animate the empty and the armature will move accordingly. I want to have a custom character mesh, so I will delete the default mesh from Mixamo and after switching the armature to rest mode, we'll add a variety of primitive spheres lined up to the armature to create my character. You can also import a more detailed model of your choice. Once your mesh is lined up with the armature, apply all transforms to the character mesh and parent the mesh to your armature using automatic weights. Now when you bring your armature back into pose mode, your custom character mesh should move around accordingly. Finally, so that your mesh can interact with the cloth that we're going to add to the scene, enable its collision physics in the Physics Properties tab. Before we add the cloth, I'll animate the empty moving forward over the course of our timeline, and you will have a moving character like this. Now let's create our cloth simulation. To create the base of the cloth, add a plane to your scene above your motion capture character. For cloth simulation, the more vertices we have for our cloth object, the better, so go into edit mode and subdivide your plane several times for a more detailed simulation. Apply all transforms to this plane, and enable its cloth physics in the Physics Properties tab. At this point, if you play through your scene, you should have a basic cloth simulation. But let's adjust a few settings to get a better result. I recommend using some of the presets for cloth simulation. So I will go to the cloth simulation drop down menu and select the cotton option. Now various settings will be applied to this mesh that are similar to how cotton reacts in the real world. To increase the quality of your cloth simulation and likely override some minor glitches, I recommend increasing the quality steps to at least 10 or 15. Finally, I also recommend enabling self-collision so that the cloth mesh interacts with itself in addition to any collision objects that you've added to your scene. Under the Cache tab, choose the frames that you want to bake out your simulation data. And finally, after saving your project, click on Bake Dynamics. After Blender works its magic, you should have a pretty cool looking cloth simulation at this point. As with any simulation, often glitches can occur. I have listed a few troubleshooting options for cloth simulation in the description below in case you are dealing with any. To smooth up the look of our cloth simulation, I'll add a subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth our mesh as well. At this point, we can add a material to our cloth, UV unwrap it, and add a grungy texture to it. Finally, add a camera and some lights to your scene, hide your character mesh from your final render, and you can render out your ghost cloth effect. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what visual effects techniques you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.